The Upshot Project welcomes you to the Cheeky Travelers podcast, a show for people who love and aspire to travel. In each episode, you'll get a greater insight into what traveling can do for you as it has for us. From our anecdotes, we aim to inspire you to go out and explore the world around you with an open mind. If you would like to see if our voices match our faces, you're more than welcome to pop over to our YouTube channel, The Upshot Project. But we also have other social media in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok if you would like to reach out to us. And now, it's time to get lost. Hi everyone, welcome to the very first episode of The Upshot Project, the Cheeky Travelers podcast. I'm your co-host, Sol, and in today's episode, you'll get to know who we are, how we met, and why traveling is a big part of our lives. We really went all in with the confessions in this episode, so you won't get disappointed. Well, starting a first podcast is going to be great fun. Yes, it's going to be, I think, a great challenge, but it's going to be a fun challenge, and oh, I guess, 100%. I guess that's why we're doing it as well. Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to start Go for by asking you. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I think the first thing that we should do is actually introducing ourselves and yeah. Introduce me. Then. <laughs> Tell me more. So like, I know who you are, but if anyone is listening to this right now, what do you think they should know about you? Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess with, with it being a, a travel podcast, I've always, um, I've had the opportunity of traveling to many different places that I've absolutely adored, um, been wonderfully privileged in that, um, didn't get too many presents for things like Christmas or birthdays, but we went away on like holidays and stuff like that. So it called, it cultivated this sense that experiences are worth more than physical stuff. So, um, yeah, before we met. Uh, I was I was gallivanting around Europe and Asia, and I I found uh, a part of myself that I didn't know existed, mm -hmm. which is like being okay with myself, just by myself, yeah. but also loving the sense of the unknown and the adventure and sort of mm. moving forward. Um, but yeah, I think that's a quick fire snippet of me. Yeah, that's really quick. <laughs> oh, I don't. I'm not, not, really, like... not really good at blabbing. Yeah, you are. And one thing I was thinking about as well, like when I was trying to figure out this podcast and this first episode was how our experiences traveling were so different. So like, I mean, you've mentioned it, you're, you, well, actually you've been, um, you've traveled alone for like one year, year and a bit. which is the dream of like a lot of traveler here. Yes. But prior to that, you've traveled a lot with your family in different, really different part of the world that I wish I would have gone. Um, but my experience was really different because, because I have family a bit all over the world, but especially in France, a lot of my holidays I spent with the locals. Mm. which is such a different type of travel. Yes. Very There's much. some ups and downs, I think, in both. And yeah, like, I guess, how was it for you to just go to th different places, go on touristy travels? Some of them were definitely touristy travels, but... Um, being in the hub of uh, Sydney, Australia, like it was quite easy for the most part because Sydney is such a, um, a great stopping point for basically going to anywhere. Um, it meant that we were able to uh, pop into some of the, I think we did a couple of the Pacific Islands and stuff, mm -hmm. but also making our way across to, uh, let me think, over to Europe, so France also and Italy, like you're able to either go across um, Dubai or Singapore and it makes it nice and easy from Sydney. 
to be able to get to these different places. But I've just realized I've talked myself into a hole and I'm not yeah, entirely you... sure where I was going with that. Yeah, you didn't answer my question. No, not at all. Not at all. I was basically ask you... An entirely different question. I answer my own. Yes. <laughs> You need to listen. No, it's not even that. My ADHD got all over yeah. the whole of me. Moving on. Yes. Sorry. Let's try that one more time. Was, oh, shit. Do I even remember it? My my question was like, how was it for you to travel? To more touristy places. Touristy places in a, and in a more touristy fashion as well. Um, I found that my my folks weren't necessarily as touristy they they like we did a couple of the hot spots like we were we were lucky enough to be able to go to rome we went to paris i think and that was really it was really cool because you get like obviously the massive history and stuff but we didn't do and we didn't do so much of the the smaller towns but i do remember we went when we went to france we did paris for a few days which was hilarious because we're all inside one and a half rooms that's five people in a tiny 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 apartment in paris but going out into the sticks and going down south to like uh, central and southern France was like the best part of France for me on that particular trip. And I know that we did do some of the touristy stuff, but my parents, I think, were able to look at outside of those main sort of hotspot places, like yeah. going to, uh, let's say, some of the Pacific Islands, so Vanuatu and Samoa, I didn't know anyone before. I know, I know, I know. Uh, For those who are just listening, Hayden and I have this little uh, sign. Well, little inside joke. Inside joke where we just raise the pinky finger. We go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like we, we do a little bit of a wiggle. But um, yeah, it's, I, I would say that once we sort of had done some of the bigger mm -hmm. destinations we found that we actually loved the smaller places so we weren't going back to europe we were doing spots that were a little bit closer to home and pacific islands from sydney is way closer than going all the way on the, yeah. on the other side of the planet so um we did do america a couple of times um because i've got a uh, family who holiday there over christmas and that, those were the very first times that i even saw snow some of the very first times I saw snow and then skied at like at Christmas time, which for me is baffling because Christmas in Australia is like 35 degrees Celsius and you go to the beach. Well, you know what baffled me? What? <laughs> Knowing that you don't wear any pants under your snow pants. Oh, yeah. Because, um, so yeah, you mentioned it, you're from Australia and... Uh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You're from a slightly winter, winter. Yeah, so place. I'm from Canada, but I'm from the French province of Canada, which is Quebec. So my first language is French. So sorry in advance if uh, I do some uh, grammatical mistakes in English. But, That's fine. you know, can't be perfect. <laughs> You're close enough. Yeah. So, yeah, I come from a place that is very snowy, very cold. So yeah so things that you would consider to be normal like normal behavior particularly in like the winter i'm still trying to figure out so things like wearing nothing under my snow pants or wearing something on my snow pants i didn't know when i went skiing it just got too hot if i put anything underneath so i was just wearing um yeah without giving too much information away just my undies and the pants <laughs> like yeah so. yeah and like you being uh in living in australia you were closer to a part of the world that I wasn't. Mm. So you discovered countries that I didn't. And I discovered a lot of countries as well that you didn't. Yeah. Which makes our experience as a couple, because yes, we are a couple. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> really interesting as well when uh, traveling together. Yeah. Particularly like some of the, because you've done was it Hungary and a few other yeah. like, like I've more obscure places in Europe. I wouldn't say obscure. Well, like, you know, like, not the, the general thought yeah. hotspot. Like, yeah, yeah. Know, Paris, London, sort of stuff you've yeah. done. I've, yeah, I've mostly done Europe. Yeah. Um, I'll continue with present, like, introducing myself. Go for it. If that's okay. Yeah. Is it okay for you? Keep, keep you, it running. I love hearing about yourself. Do you consent? <laughs> <laughs> do I consent? Yes, mate. Yes, mate. <laughs> so, hello, everyone. Uh... <laughs> My name is Sol, or full name Solène, really, really French. I'm almost 
30 years old and I'm French Canadian. Um, my mom is French and my dad is Quebec. And so, as I said earlier, like, um, I've been in France multiple times over my childhood. And I think that's what got me into the travel world. I was going to France maybe once every two years when we were lucky. Nice. Yeah. And like, we would visit my family over there and then we would, I don't know, leave for maybe two weeks and travel to a different place around France. And it's because of all those experiences that in, I think it was in 2015 or something like that. It was the best travel year of my life <laughs> because I've just had a breakup, like four years relationship breakup. And I was like, you know what? Fuck that shit. <laughs> I don't know if we can, I can say that. I'm hey, going to keep it or whatever. Like, fuck that shit. Like, I'm over this. I'm going to travel. So my first ever backpack travel was... It wasn't too obscure, as you said, but it was Denmark and the Netherlands, hmm. which is... Yeah, it's, I, it's close to France. Yeah, but it's a good... Now that I think back on it, it's like a good first backpack travel because it was, it was quite safe. It was beautiful. It was easy to just navigate towards the cities and the two different countries as well. It was just a wonderful experience. And I went with... Uh, one of my friends back in the days, uh, her name is Sarah, and it was so good because we do, we did know each other a little bit, but not that much. She was mostly friend with my best friend back in the days, Matthew. But Sarah was my hairdresser, and we were like, okay. yeah. It's a really interesting relationship you have with people. I don't think you knew that. No, I didn't. I was genuinely going to ask, like, so who, did you travel by yourself or you travel with someone? So No, yeah. I wasn't comfortable traveling alone just yet. That's fair enough. Yeah. But I traveled with Sarah and it it was the... Those two weeks opened my mind on traveling and backpacking. And I was like, oh my God, I'm screwed <laughs> because now I need to do it more. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was, was it? Yeah, I was in uni back in the days. And I was finishing unis, there was strikes and everything. Got my first panic attack before leaving for that travel. Because, anyway, there was a lot happening mm -hmm. back then. But when I came back, I had the opportunity to leave again, but by myself. And f go find my family and friends. Yes. For two months. It's not bad. Yeah. So that's why 2015 was just awesome. Because I left two weeks with one of my friends. First backpack travel. Then one month, one month and a half after. I left for like two months. Basically the whole Quebecan summer. That's all. Um, yeah. It was great. Yeah. So of course I've been to France with my family. I've been to Italy. I've been to England. And I think I've also been to Hungary back in the days with the friend of my cousin that mm. became a good friend of mine, Jeremy, which you met when we traveled in Europe yes. together. Yes, right? I, I, I do distinctly remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the rest of it is history. Like then I just, every summer I would just leave for two months and go travel in Europe, see my family, and it was just great. <laughs> <laughs> and it, like, it was great to see my family, but also it was just great to have a place to crash and be again with the locals. Mm -hmm. And I could, I guess that's another episode I, I would really love to talk about, but more like uh, the, your identity. Yeah. When you travel. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because for me, being in France was connecting with my French identity. Yeah. That I couldn't really back in Quebec. Yes. So oh, it brought me so much 
so much beautiful things to just be in Europe because I was like, oh, I'm discovering a part of myself that I never got to explore that much because when I was traveling with my parents, it wasn't the same. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, you've got that extra like level of freedom. Like, yes, you get to you get you know free accommodation, crash with like family and like new friends that are in France, yeah. for example. But there's also that thing of like well they're probably working or doing other things throughout the day so now you have free reign to explore an entirely new place outside of uh montreal yeah and i imagine that sort of thing would genuinely open your eyes to see like the possibilities of what you could find and oh this was different from last year yeah that sort of thing i think yeah no it was great it was great and then in 2017 the oh yeah in 2017 i decided to go to ireland for one week and then i met you it was 2018 wasn't it, it was 2018 yeah oh yeah i met it's you in 2018. 2018 come on get it right <laughs> i was like 2017 i'm pretty sure i was still working at the casino 2018 yeah it was 20, it was 2018 yeah and then Six months later was the Christmas down in Cornwall, and then... Yeah. Yeah. So... Do you want yeah. to get into that now? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? So, Hayden, do you remember the first time you met me? <laughs> I do remember when you first walked in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember a lot of the stuff that happened afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because uh, being in Ireland, they have a wonderful drinking culture, and boy howdy are there pubs and the mm -hmm. drinks very tasty yeah but like where were you in your life at that moment i was when i first met you that was within sorry let me think about that that was about a month or two two three yeah it was about two three months into travel i left in may i met you in july yeah, July. In July. yeah two months mm -hmm. um so i was in i was in the uk for two months at this point and I was realizing how fast I was burning through money because the Australian dollar against the pound and the euro, depending on which part of Ireland that you're in, just absolutely destroys your bank account. So that was quite interesting. And I was trying to see as much as I could at the time. So everything was just hustle, hustle, hustle. Um, yeah, it was very rushed. But there were definitely moments that I remember more now because obviously mm -hmm. we've been together for four and a half years mm. that I think back on, I'm like, wow, what are the chances of that sort of thing happening? And being in, being at the start of that pub crawl, having a couple of drinks, I think the, the, so, the soccer world cup was on or yeah. football world cup so, if you're not Australian. Yeah. It was a pub crawl organized by the hostel. Uh, organized by the hostel yeah. at the time, uh, which I didn't join the dots on because if, the hostel is the one that's uh, organizing the pub crawl. You would probably be at the same hostel. Mm -hmm. Didn't join that dot. No. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly after uh, a couple of beers and free drinks at uh, about four different venues. Mm -hmm. But then I remember walking you back to your hostel in inverted commas, hoping for a kiss or something, but then was totally fine with a hug. Mm -hmm. And then I walked back to my hostel which was literally down the corridor, up like two flights of stairs in like an entirely different... It felt so long. Yeah. And then I didn't see you again for another two, three days. Yeah, because I... Because you had bounced to, to... Yeah, because the morning after I had to leave to somewhere else in Ireland for like two days, and then I was coming back to Galway. And yeah. then... At the bus stop. At the bus stop, we bumped into each other. Yeah, and for about... Was it half an hour? 15 minutes. It was about 15, 20 yeah. minutes. And in that time, I was able to get your Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll get your Instagram. And yeah, we just, I guess we kept in touch while I was gallivanting either mm. back in Australia or through Asia for the next six months. And yeah, through all of that, like we kept in contact and it was... So going back to Australia, just... Just in my just in my head, I'm thinking about the times that I was messaging you was when I went back to Australia. There was a couple of times there, I imagine, and then going coming back through Asia, which is way cheaper than anything in Europe, so much cheaper. So 
I was in Asia for about two or three months. And I remember being in Nepal, uh, hiking through the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. And I remember there were definitely points throughout yeah. Yeah, yeah, where I, I couldn't message you. Yeah. But then if I had Wi-Fi, I would send like a full voice message or like multiple voice messages or a full text or text, something. Yeah. Oh, because text was a lot easier to get through. Voice messages weren't as often. Mm. But yeah, I remember doing that. And mind you, uh, I also was... Texting one or two other people. Yes, <laughs> I wasn't special. Yeah, you, know, you were. You were special because you were one of two people I was messaging at the time. Oh, one of three because I was talking to my parents, which don't count. I was half special, <laughs> and the other person was the other half special. Half special, bit. Oh, shit hurts. Uh, uh, talking about this stuff in public just sounds awful. I mean, it's alright. It's okay now. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot. There was a lot of uh, exactly backpedaling. Yeah, and, and stuff like. like that. Nothing. When you were, yeah, and like when you were traveling through Asia, I was dealing with my own stuff at home, um, like a boyfriend. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Yeah. And like, I guess I was like in denying myself when you were messaging me. I was like, oh, that's a good friend of mine. Message <laughs> like, you know, like, because nothing happened when when we met nothing happened i was mm. like and I, I was straight up with you i was like no like i have a partner and na, 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 and mm. that's one of the reasons why i didn't kiss you i was like just a friendly hug yeah and i was no. i was all, like when, when i i believe this was like oh okay that's fine like i get it yeah respect yeah uh and then in my relationship at the time it wasn't going super well um and yeah, I guess at that moment I was like, so okay, my coping mechanism is to fly away, <laughs> literally, when things are not going well. Which means, because it was <laughs> super well with my boyfriend back in the days, I was like, and it was over Christmas, I was like, you know what? Well, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't spend Christmas with him, and in my head I was like, I'm just going to go to England two weeks. And genuinely, I was going alone. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's what you told me in the message for the most part. Yeah. In the, yeah. In the message. Yeah. And then you were in Asia and you were like, well, actually, I need to go back to England because I have a working visa there. That's true. And yeah. then we 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 were supposed to catch up for like two days. Two, three days at most. Yeah. It ended up being two weeks and honestly it was like the best two weeks i've ever had and that's when i took the decision that now nah, like i can continue like that so i broke up with my boyfriend back in the days and then you were working in cardiff yep and yeah we didn't decide to be together no because you met someone else yeah you messaged me saying I don't want to, I can't talk to you anymore. I, I technically can't talk to you anymore. Yeah, no, that was a, yeah. that was very complicated mm. in my head. Cause I didn't, I remember after like saying goodbye to you at the bus stop while you got on the bus to go to the airport. Oh my God. It was like a movie. It felt like a movie. I was like, what am I doing right now? Like, I'm like, I'm kind of torn. And then I caught a, I caught a train to get mm -hmm. to Cardiff because I had a place to crash, which was the next girl at the time. <laughs> um, and it was, it, the second I got there, it felt weird. Like I felt, mm. some part of me felt like I was betraying something and yeah. I didn't understand. And I put myself, I put soul and I put my ex in a very weird position all at once. It's okay. We were learning. We were learning. I was learning a lot. I didn't yeah. think I wanted any relationships at all because I was traveling. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I guess I was in denial of having any feelings for you at the time, mm -hmm. particularly over that, that one card game we had. And it's just like, oh, telling the future. Remember? Yeah. But yeah, I then dated this girl for two, two, three months. Yeah. And I realized that we were not very compatible. And part of me felt awful because it felt like I had taken an opportunity more to find a spot mm. to to um, to just get a job and to earn some money versus actually looking after the person that I was going like, to that I was with. Mind you, there were definitely attributes of the, my ex that I 
Mm -hmm. There were so many different kinds of red flags that I should have seen coming and yeah. just flew over it because we're all learning. Mm. Yeah. And then after that, I, I, I still will never forget, I was on the phone to you. I was having a really rough time because I felt so isolated, so isolated in the area that I was in, in Cardiff. I was always doing night shifts at work at the pub and my my girlfriend at the time was just atrociously, like treating me atrociously, like yelling and all the rest of yeah. it. It was really, really difficult. I had so much trouble with it and I didn't know who to talk to, but I knew that you were so good to talk to when it came to this sort of stuff. And then you asked me one simple question yeah, and that was... So I asked him because he basically asked me like, what should I do? And I'm like, dude, I'm so biased. <laughs> I'm so biased. I don't know why you're asking me and you're putting me into that position, but I guess I knew what I was doing. So I asked him, <laughs> I asked a little him, manipulator. Oi, for your own good. For my own. <laughs> okay. Yep. I asked him, do you feel that you're respecting yourself in that relationship? And I told him, I don't want the answer right now. I'm going to hang up the phone and you need to answer that question by yourself. And then a week later, you... Yeah, by the end, of the, that was on Sunday night, Monday morning or something. Yeah, so, or Monday night. And by Friday, I'd made up my mind. I was like, I can't date. Like, mm -hmm. it's not fair on me. It's not fair on my, my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. And yeah, I... Mm. Yeah, it, it, took, it took a little bit of yeah. time to actually break up with her. She didn't accept it. Yeah. And she, she said, yeah. But I won't go into all the nitty gritties on that. But it was just, yeah. Not was, yet. Uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, and then, oh, I don't want to relive it. Yeah. And then a couple of months later, we decided to meet in Spain. And that's when we decided to make the relationship official. There was some back and forth um, with the distance. Uh, so we... S we saw each other for two months over in Spain, Morocco. Yeah. Spain, Morocco. Andorra. Andorra, France. Hungary. Uh, wait, no, we didn't get no, no, no. Poland. Poland. Czech we Republic. Czech Republic. Jeez, we went to a lot of places <laughs> in two months. <laughs> Far out. Looking back on that's crazy. Yeah. And then I had to go back to Canada. You went back. To, you continued traveling a little bit. And then you went. It wasn't back for to very Canada. long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I traveled to Australia for one month to see if I liked it. Then well, I liked it. Well, it, you liked it, but a strip, like Sydney was on fire. Yeah, like it was the big, big, big fires. It was uh, December 2019 until January 2020. And then COVID happened and then boom, separated for 11 months. And then you joined me to Canada in a small town called Set Il, so Seven Islands. We stayed there. We stayed in Canada for like eight months until I got my exemption to go to Australia, then we stayed in Australia for two years and now we are back in Quebec in that same in the same in the in the I wouldn't say the place where it all started, but like my first Canada journey. Yeah, and we're back here. That's not where I'm from, actually. We're ju we are just back here for the money to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. then because we do have some more like some bigger projects. And yeah. here I guess was the best solution to save as much money. But anyway, we won't get into that right now. No. Nope. Um, and because it's winter right now and we can't necessarily film videos because yes, we have a YouTube channel called The Upshot Project. And because it's winter, it's small, we don't really know, I guess, what to film. We decided to start this podcast, which brings us to the next subject what is this this podcast and what's the goal what's our purpose with it i guess the way that i see it is to not necessarily re-incentivize but reignite the passion we have for travel because i feel like particularly when we get mm. sort of stuck in one place yeah. you get more like we get more worried about like what are you doing Tuesday, Wednesday, like the everyday stuff. You're not really planning so much what's ahead. Whereas when we go traveling, it's like, okay, so we've just been to El Salvador. Where are we going next? That's yeah. like, it's this, 
this this fun hustle this this adventure that you're going on but at the moment i think for me the podcast is going to basically uh reignite that passion for traveling getting lost in new places trying to speak french in this case which has been something i've been trying to do true but also i guess to look back on the travels we've been doing and how it changed us over the time how we it's gonna sound really corny but how our travel our travels transformed us in a way like the well it's corny but it's true yeah like like, i'm a very very different person you are a very very different person and i guess it's also bringing you guys into this self-discovery of what travel can do yeah and if anyone that is listening or watching this podcast is hesitating to just leave and go travel even for like two weeks alone or with a friend i i guess i really want this podcast to be for you and to encourage you to do it and to give you give you the motivation to just save your money make your own lunches (laughs) (laughs) make your own lunches Yeah, yeah. yeah to save your money and then go travel for what it can start with two week, uh, two I, weeks or one week, like in another state, another province. Well, I mean, my first solo yeah. travel was three days, I think it was. It was two nights in Byron Bay Yeah. by myself. It was the first solo trip, and it, was, it wasn't the greatest trip by any means, <laughs> but it was great because then I realized that small sense of what is possible, like what you were saying earlier. Yeah. And, yeah, going to New Zealand, like 2017... I had like bucket list items. I was like, I'm going to go skydiving. I'm going to go bungee jumping. I'm going to go skiing by myself, like stuff. Mm -hmm. And it really sort of gets the ball rolling. And I really hope that this sort of podcast also, because I know that like, like inspires other people, because I know that sometimes like I've had conversations with others who said, oh, like, like particularly some of the people that I worked with at the casino, where all you see is the people at the casino. It, all you see is darkness because it's night shift. And they went, when I quit and went traveling and I talked to them about my plans, they were like, actually, I want to do that. How did you do it? And then I gave them like a rough guideline. Yeah. No specifics is it because I am not perfect with this. I make so many mistakes along the way, but I, I have found that so many people that I've spoken to that have gone yeah. traveling after these sort of conversations, like that was the greatest thing. I went to Canada, I was in Banff and like I did a ski season, got paid pennies, but it was the best. Exactly. And that's yeah. the sort of thing that I, I love hearing those sort of stories because it's like sharing happiness. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then you, and then they find their version of that happiness mm. because what makes me happy and what makes someone else happy are usually very, very different. Of course. So yeah, no, I, that that is something that I'd love to bring uh bring along with this podcast. Yeah, no, same same. I guess the motivation and I guess on a selfish level, just to talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Just to talk about myself. No, no, no I'm joking. Are you? <laughs> yes I am. <laughs> you know I'm a really good listener. I don't talk that much. Mm-hmm. That's why we're starting a podcast. Yeah, honestly, yeah, because for me it feels good to just talk. And I know that we can have good conversations. Yes. And that's why we called that podcast Cheeky Travelers. Because we're not taking ourselves that seriously. And that that's what I that's what I want to bring to the to this podcast. Yes, of course we're gonna talk about motivation, self-discovery, and all that serious stuff. But it also can be funny to not take yourself so seriously. Oh, yes. You know, and when we're having conversations, just the two of us, sometimes we just make the best discoveries in the world. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we think they're the best discoveries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the way we get there is quite funny. And I think, you know what, some people might benefit from hearing our... Uh, ramblings. Ramblings stupidities <laughs> stupidities but also i i feel like we we bring a little bit of experience mm. with like the place that we've gone to because i mean i like for example i didn't know that you could practically speak three languages but it's espanolas no 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 look my spanish is really basic it's like 
I guess it's easier once I'm in the country. But True. Like the emotion of it, like you now have no choice kind of thing. Exactly, because now if you would ask me to speak Spanish, I wouldn't know what to say. Yes. But in a survival mode, girl, <laughs> <laughs> girl, I can speak Russian for you. <laughs> That would be an interesting place to go to at this point in time, for sure. To eat? Like, I can speak any languages. <laughs> for sure. For sure. All right. I don't, I don't ask. Or finding a toilet. Because I yeah. always need to pee. That's very true. That's very true. And it's... Sometimes it's annoying. Like, I, like it's it's partially annoying for me because like, oh, so... Again. And for you, it must be like, oh my God, my body. I'm going to piss myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, literally. I feel like toilet... Or where is the toilet is the first thing I'm learning in the language of the country I'm going. For, for me, it's hello, thank you, I'm allergic to nuts, don't kill me. And I want a beer. <laughs> and I'm and, and, uh, una, una cerveza. Una cerveza, por favor. <laughs> yeah, no, I can absolutely nail that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so, yeah, I just hope this podcast, if this podcast can at least help someone to just take their stuff and just jump to the other step of like, okay, now I'm going. Not only the planning or just dreaming, oh, I want to travel, but putting yourself in action. Mm. If this podcast can do it to at least one person, I'm done. Like, yeah, yeah. No, like that's a that's, uh, you know, fulfillment in itself. Definitely. So, yeah, that's about it. You You reckon? I mean, I've actually thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Me too. I don't know if it's any good, but I'm doing it for me and you. And we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. It's experience. It's experience. And that's when we started our channel, The Upshot Project. That was one of the main ideas. Get out, getting out of your comfort zone, mm. trying stuff you've always wanted to do. And that's what we're doing right now. Yes. Cause this, and I love it. It, it, feel, it feels weird, but it also feels natural. So, Yeah. Just... So, damn. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If actually anyone listened to this podcast, what you can expect for the next episodes, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. <laughs> but it'll be travel themed. So anything around travel, whether it be new experiences, yeah. how you feel, travel, that sort of stuff. Yeah, travel tips, travel experiences, travel anecdotes. True. But I think I think if we could also try and eventually get like uh, one or two other people who love traveling, other guests on the show. Yeah. I definitely know a couple of people. Yeah, same, same. And I think that would be so interesting. But yeah, thank you so much to have listened. So weird. <laughs> Usually I'm like, thank you for watching. Yeah, being on a being on a camera versus yeah. being on a mic. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if you love this, if you love traveling, or you know someone who would really enjoy listening to our ramblings, please do uh, share it with them. Uh, also subscribe. We try and we'll try and get this out every single week. Yeah. But uh, until next time, until next time, guys. Thank you very much. Love you all. Bye. Bye.